The following episode of the Comics and Crypto Podcast is for informational purposes only, and anything expressed by the hosts or their guests is solely their opinion. This podcast does not constitute financial advice, and anyone wishing to invest should seek their own independent financial or professional help. Have fun, and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Sean O'Hare, and I know comics. Hi, I'm Spencer Vogel, and I know crypto. Hi, I'm Kevin Lee Loader, and I don't know shit. This is the Comics and Crypto Podcast. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics, Collectors World in a Digital Age. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics, it's where the next billionaires will be rich. Comics and Crypto. Today we have the privilege of welcoming an extraordinary guest whose captivating story has taken the world by storm, making headlines across the United States and beyond. His staggering collection of comics has left collectors breathless, including a priceless Superman number one comic, that's fetched a staggering $2.6 million in the same grade. It is with great pleasure that we introduce our esteemed guest, Darren Watts. Darren, hey! Hey, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Yes, I appreciate it. Man, it's it's been quite a, an exciting journey for myself personally and for Spencer just to view what you've been on and the journey you've been on. You know, we can start from the beginning. You could just share your background on your remarkable journey with our audience who aren't familiar. Sure. I, um, this is, this is there's two things. There's a couple of things. Well, there's multiple things going on. Uh, one is um, a documentary that we're putting together called Selling Superman. And that was actually the idea of a high school friend of mine um, named Adam Schomer, who is the uh, president of Eye to Eye Productions. He's just an in in incredible guy to work with. Um, and when he heard about my father's passing and then what that meant as far as this collection, uh, he started asking more and more questions. And then um, uh, thought that maybe, you know, this is something that the world would want to hear about, you know what I mean? And for me, I was kind of, uh, taken aback by that because, you know, I was like, who would want to hear about this? You know, I mean, some guy disgruntedly inheriting daddy's comics and didn't want them and what the hell. And, um, when we started getting into really the depth of the collection, it, it, it became evident that this was a special story. And then, you know, uh, to kind of, explain to the world um what it meant to me growing up and what it meant to my family growing up and how you know it's very easy to sit back and say wow i what an incredible situation you know to inherit all these things with tremendous value and whatever and you know that's just a very small tip of the iceberg you know viewpoint you know there's a lot of pain and and family trauma that went along with it um and uh just how it you know has woven into my life currently so there's the documentary there's the fact of us uh having the collection itself and having the fact that nothing was organized nothing was in any kind of order uh so just going through that discovering still on a day-to-day -day basis what's even in this collection literally mm -hmm. so we estimate there's over 300,000 comics there's probably equal amount of cards uh sports cards if not more something that's not always talked about in this is um is the amount of cards because I don't talk much about cards <laughs> and I really haven't gotten into cards and I don't like yeah. cards um so <laughs> the thing is that I'll just be frank you know not really into it but they can't be ignored you know i've graded thousands of cars at this point between um csg and psa i don't even want to know what your your grading fees have been like and what you've uh, been grading over yeah, the well the grading fees especially in <laughs> comics i mean they're 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 deep 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 six figures i mean you know yeah. it's i mean especially for the, the big bucks yeah it's... absolutely i mean you know you can imagine um when you start doing that many walkthroughs and and mm -hmm. the, you know three percent which is now four percent right on any of those so yeah i mean and then of course we allow them to press or clean when they recommend um as mm -hmm. well you know i'm a firm believer in if a grading company um especially with me working with matt nelson so closely directly yeah when he recommends something i tend to listen uh, that's usually a smart move uh, because nice. there's a reason why they're recommending that, you know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's that. So that's the, that's the, that's the second. And then the third is just the, the, the estate portion of it, right? There's a tremendous amount of documentation that has to be done mm -hmm. when you're doing this. And this could be real estate. This could be, uh, you know, fine art. This could be fine silver, China. I mean, you know what I mean? Anything of value um, in, in an estate has to be treated a certain way. So there are particulars behind the scene things with that. So it's, you know, it's not all glamorous. It's not all like whipping out expensive books and saying, wow, this is so cool. Um, there's a, there's a lot of work to it as well. So very cool. 
Well, excited to get into, you know, talking a little bit more about it and get into some of the details. The first question I have is how did you feel and what kind of thoughts were going through your head while you were going through your dad's collection? And, and just give you some like context for me personally on that. My dad actually passed away about three and a half years ago and he was a collector. He collected stamps and a couple other things as well. But like after he passed away for me, that was like a, a very like cathartic thing. And the way that I felt like I connected with him was like going through his collection and kind of just seeing what, what he was into and like kind of getting a sense into like kind of some of the things he was thinking about at, at that time when he was collecting that. So I'm kind of just curious, kind of some of the things that were going through your head uh, as you, as you were going through your dad's collection. Absolutely. Um, so you use, you use the word collection or collector. And um, that's interesting because we dive into that and I don't feel my dad was a collector. I feel he was a hoard. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's a big difference. You know, this stuff was always around when we were growing up, we knew of it. We saw it meaning the boxes. You know, we saw in every room of the house, um, that's exaggeration. I mean, in many rooms of the house, you know, whether my mother liked it or not, and she didn't, she hated it. And we just always knew it was there, but we didn't know the contents, right? So it went from, I guess, to answer your question, it went from white boxes, right, mostly, or whatever, to actual contents that actually started meaning something because I had no idea what was in the collection. I knew we had a Superman. I knew we had the Batman. He talked about the Hulk, Hulks. Remember, there's very few books we have one of. There's very yeah. few books we have one of. We wow. had one Superman one, one Batman one, but every other major key, multiples, every one wow. um, for the most part. So ASM one, F A, you know, AF 15, you know, FF one, every one of them. Wow. We're going to have more than one in this collection. So that's what's so amazing is that, you know, while we're not something like the Promise Collection, which is in, insane, you know, I mean, the incredible high mm -hmm. grades and they whipping them out. It's like, well, okay, my highest FF1 might be a 6.5, but I've got five of them. Right. You know what I mean? And so there's the difference. Um, and it's not about whatever's better. Or it's just, it's interesting is what I guess mm -hmm. I mean. You know, a lot of people, they don't collect like that. Well, like I said, he hoarded. So what was he doing? You know, those certainly weren't bought all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then you run into scenarios where, um, like, you know, I talk about it all the time, you know, uh, take a Ghost Rider 1. You know, we have like 150 copies of that book all in nine crosses. <laughs> you know what I mean? We have like, I don't know, 16, nine, eights or something that I've even graded so far. And um, and with, there's more in there that will, I mean, you know, what was he doing? You know, I don't have the answer to that because the thing is that um, uh, we weren't involved. So what my thoughts were going through the collection was, damn it, really. I asked him not to do this. Um, this is a logistical nightmare. This could have been done so many better ways. Nothing was graded, zero. He was afraid of grading. He was afraid of anyone even knowing this stuff existed. He was afraid of it leaving the house. So again, my my sentiment was, oh, geez, you know, another, uh, you know, another thing from him that I have to now deal with. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I like comics now a lot more than I ever did growing up because they weren't of, they weren't presented to me correctly. You know what I mean? Comics mm -hmm. were proved. They were, don't talk about them. Don't touch them. You know, they're not to be discussed. You certainly don't look at them. You never handle them. You know what I mean? So that's not what a collector does. A collector's proud yeah. of stuff. I see both of you guys. You have stuff in the background. You're proud of it. It's out. It's on display. I do the same thing now. You know, there's covers I love and I display them. That's what it's about. You might have someone over who's never seen something like that. You show it to them. You're proud. You know, it's not showing off. It's just like, you know, this is a part of me. This is, this yeah. is what I'm into, right? right? Yeah. Not with him. So it mm -hmm. was, it was very dark and sad, to be honest with you. Gotcha. So what we're trying to do is rewrite that narrative. Um, you know, we're involving friends and family. And um, when I say family, I mean, you know, my mother who's still around, um, you know, that did divorce. My dad wanted no part of this stuff. But now it sees that it can be shared in a way that people are enjoying, you know, is making it out to people that really do appreciate it instead of just sticking something in a box for 40, 50 years right. and doing nothing with it. Um, she has a different attitude on it. You know, so we've been accused of like, you know, changing our tune and like, oh, you might, you resented him when he was alive, but now you love it. No, it's not true at all. We still resent the hell out of him. You know what I mean? I didn't want yeah. this. I didn't want any of this. I um would have had a much different situation. I would have traded anything for an actual relationship with this man rather than mm -hmm. a bunch of sterile boxes. I don't need the money. I have multiple businesses um uh that do very well. And so um it's a heavy burden. And it's something that we're trying to turn into from a burden to, um, you know, a pleasant thing as much as we can uh, and affect a lot of people along the way and help. We have several charities we're working with. So 
Amazing. Again, just trying to trying to make a good thing out of something that was so shunned and just yeah. uh, pooed as a kid. So would you consider yourself a collector now through this experience? I, I would. Um, yeah. I, I I would because, the, uh, like, you know, the things I'm seeking now are, um, you know, I'm a huge fan of, like, just these weird, crazy space golden age comics that are just nice. nuts. You know what I mean? I just can't <laughs> get enough of them. I'm buying the hell out of them. And really, it's, it's kind of like, I mean, I guess you could call it with recycled money and occasion. I don't look at it that way. I just, like, if I like it, I get it. And, um, you know, but there's stuff being sold at the same time as us buying, you know, so it's kind of like trading in some ways, you know. Um, so I, 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 I think I'm doing it much more along the lines of someone that does appreciate the things that they get. You know, like right here, I just got, you know, I just got some mail call today, two books. There we um, go. I was waiting. Hey, on, you know, right here, right here, you know, I mean, unboxing party. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, one of those is a big book. It's the first appearance of Superboy. So I oh, mean, nice. uh, yeah, nice. in a high, in a high awesome. grade, in high grade. Very cool. So Very cool. I mean, um, again, if I see it and I like it, I get it. Um, it's nice to have a great relationship with uh, a lot of the auction houses, and yeah, um, we even <laughs> have ha we even have some business ideas for for that to make things easier um, that revolve around um, fintech, which is what my specialty is in in real life, if you will. Um, so we're, again, we're just trying to find our, our, our place, our niche, um, um, helping a lot of people, uh, again, from the smallest collectors like Josh, the hatchback kid, you know, who's in the, the, the trailer there, uh, and then all the way up to, you know, guys like Harley Yee, who we're very close with, uh, who's a local Detroit dealer, but goes to cons all over the world, literally. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's not just a matter of like, you know, calling up heritage and saying, Hey, sell these books. No, we do, you know, sales from direct messages on instagram with people that hit us up um and you know um through again you know dealers of all sizes um so we're just trying to keep it very fair and cool that's awesome darren i love that because we, we started the podcast about a year and a half ago and it's been an amazing journey we've met so many incredible people worldwide because of it mm -hmm. so i can only imagine like what it's been like for you being able to meet so many remarkable people that are enjoying this experience with you i have some great stories about that so yeah it's really it's really nice and humbling when people do care at the level and um i try to post those you know when they occur on on my instagram and that's you know uh fantastic underscore comics that the one i manage and and just have fun with and again i'm not looking for a million followers i usually don't even hashtag my stuff you know that's not my goal i'm just trying to share with the people that follow you know and i i do have people that you'll just be like you know what your page is like a daily dose of insanity for me, you know, because again, we're, it's almost like, you know, who whips out seven crow ones in perfect shape on a random <laughs> Thursday, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? It just out of nowhere. I mean, not the biggest thing. I mean, and then we've done it all the way around. Like, you know, when we, uh, when we have big finds, I try to, I try to post them, but sometimes it'll backfire. You know what I mean? Because the problem is you have a lot of people that'll be like, Oh my God, can I get one of those? It's like, wait a minute. Well, we're not even sure what we're doing with these yet or for grading or not, you know, and, and I can't blame people, but you can imagine that I have to sometimes censor what's going on too, because there can be a runaway perception. It's like, oh, this guy has hundreds of those. So therefore they're, they don't matter. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm, yeah. there's a dance there. You know what I mean? I'm always fair. You know, I think that I sell usually below fair market value when I do it direct. Right. If I'm doing it on consignment, then that's kind of up to the person that's consigning. You know what I mean? Um, but me personally, I mean, I don't think we've ever been real, um, you know, unfair on our pricing or anything like that and trying to make it available to people that care. But, you know, you can get caught on that. You can get caught. It's very easy to assume like, oh, if you have 150 of them, then, you know, you can easily uh, let one go for me or two for me or whatever else. And you have those people that are kind of maybe unrealistic about what it really means and, and and i'll try to try to address that at times but you know it's it's just trying to stay out of trouble and not have too many people hate on us because you know they're either you know it could be a bunch of different reasons i mean you get everything from jealousy to people just don't understand or people that think we're you know not real or fair and um that's what i didn't ask for this you know there's no roadmap to do what we're doing you know how do you handle this so we're doing the best we can i can say that we're trying to be very fair i'm it's very important to me what has been like one of the biggest surprises for you personally uh in going through the collection and like some of the things that you found i would have to say um surprises i would have to oh i would have to say sometimes what isn't there 
Isn't that interesting? You know, yeah. um, so like, for example, I'll just give you a quick one. And I'm not saying it's not it's buried somewhere, but like, you know, again, <laughs> you guys know enough about the hobby in general to know that 86 clear basketball was a special year because it included a certain someone that became like mm. the greatest basketball player of all time. Right? He doesn't have any of an 86 clear set. Why? Mm. Like what happened uh, that I found? Yeah. And the thing is, we have a book because that's something that we tried to identify as all the like the big the big key, anything, right? Um, mm-hmm. There's 87, there's 85, there's other 86 things, you know? So like, where where, where was he thinking on that? And he loved basketball, that was his sport. You know what wow. I mean? As far as a spectator and, and really enjoyed mm-hmm. it. So like, what happened there? Or did he sell it when he found out that that was worth something back in the day? I'd love to have that history. I don't care. I mean, I just find it interesting, right? I also yeah. find it interesting that this man that literally hoarded uh, almost everything he could get his hands on. Where's the Pokemon? Oh, good. <laughs> what point. happened? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. have it. Where, where, where is it? At the time, it was nothing. He just, oh, there's, you know, someone at the comic shop that he became very involved in at a business level. He was an attorney and started doing their like, um, you know, their their legal work and so on at one of the comic stores that he really frequented. No one said to him, "Hey, this Pokemon thing's kind of gang and ground. Maybe you should just pick up a case of these." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, when it when it wasn't a big deal. You see, you see so you know, those mm-hmm. are just some quick examples. You know, when you're getting into this level of power hoarding, collecting, whatever you want to say, a, a mass accumulation, where some of the gaps were and why. I would love to know the history. But since he never talked about this stuff, I don't have the luxury of ganging that uh that backstory. Uh so that's a little frustrating. You know, where did the Superman come from? Yeah. Where did he get it? He certainly didn't buy it off the rack in 1939, okay? And <laughs> and that goes, because he was born in 43. I mean, that's where we get into pedigree or not. A lot of people ask. So I just I figure I'd address that because a lot of people ask, why are you not a pedigree? And the reason for that is because of pedigree rules uh, state that they you have to be the original owner. Now that tra- translates into an inheritance. So it would have trickled down if he would have been, okay? But he assembled this collection from a lot of different sources, okay? Um, I, again, don't have the details, which I did. I would say 70% of them, I think he bought himself uh, um, from the 70s on. But how did he get the 60s and the 50s and the 40s and the 30s books? Well, he he acquired them from other people's collection or whatever. And what I find impressive about that is this is all pre-internet, right? So he wasn't right. just like searching eBay for collections and searching Craigslist. No, no, no. This is all word of mouth. This is like dial tone phones, man, right? <laughs> You know what I mean? Even pre beepers <laughs> So, I mean, to be able to put together these full runs like he has, uh, and then, of course, multiple duplicates, would have taken a lot of effort. You know, going to the store every day or every comic day or every week and, and buying books and putting them in a box, that makes you a pedigree over time. You do that for 30, 40, 50 years, you're a pedigree. It's automatic, pretty much. You know, if you preserve them properly and whatever, uh, okay. And I'm not talking down on the, on, on what it takes to do that. But that's kind of a mechanical process. Does that make sense? You just, you know, yeah. you just a routine, you do that. If you if you have, you know, X-Men 1 through 87 and you're missing all of the 90s, I'm just making it up, and there's no internet and there's no auction houses doing it and there's no Craigslist and there's no, there's no, there's no, and you're just going to a comic shop in Livonia, Michigan and saying, hey, I need these like 40 X-Men books. How do you do that? You know, you place ads in the paper. What do you What do you do? And you find people that have the collections and you get them. And maybe that's why he had so much overlap because if he was doing this multiple times and it's like, okay, well, this guy had his X-Men, you know, extra X-Men book. So I find that fascinating. And that's the reason we're not a pedigree is because he did it that way. And that violates the rule of being a pedigree. But to be honest with you, I'm extremely happy we're not a pedigree. That's the truth. I mean, a pedigree is an incredible honor and designation, but we're a provenance and we are the only ones that ever have a custom label ever. That's great. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, which is so humble. I appreciate that. That's very humbling opinion because we had the opportunity. When I say we, I mean like I consulted my closest friends and family, you know, mother and so on, uh, about how this would lay out. And you know, if you watch the label video, I don't know if you did. Did you watch the second video on the Selling Superman trailer? So, uh, it's SellingSuperman.com. If you go to it, there's the main trailer up top, and then right on the main page. And if you scroll down, there's about a ten minute video describing the, the label 
it describes it. it. It walks you through the exact reason every single element of that label exists. Love it, hate it, think it's ugly, despise it, hate on me, hate on whatever. <laughs> All good. Don't care. But what I do care about is that you watch that video before you make a judgment. Okay. Oh. Because I've had a tremendous amount of people saying ridiculous things that are completely uneducated about what it means, what it's about. And that's frustrating. You know, again, yeah. you guys are in this industry and you guys put yourself out there with content, which is incredibly impressive and revealing. And you deal with the trolls. You deal with people oh, that yeah. are the haters and so on. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. I could give a shit <laughs> oh, <laughs> about those guys. I mean, I think it's hysterical. The things I've read are, I, honestly, I think that these people should redirect their time into something more creative that can bring them profit because the imagination <laughs> of some of these people is fascinating. But what I don't think is cool is when they come from a zero basis of understanding, have not watched either our trailer, any of the video or podcast, like what you're doing. We've done it with several people. Uh, and or especially watch that label trailer um, and video because then you will understand that it is in no way a propaganda attempt and no way understand, you know, in, in, in all ways you'll understand that it is um, was an incredibly thoughtful thing, love it or hate it. Again, I don't care about that. Everyone's entitled to that opinion. And one of the things that's most sensitive to me is that, you know, I didn't dominate the front of the label with some, you know, wild graphic that demands a ton of attention because it's incredible that someone would just even want to own one of our labels anyway in their collection. You know what I mean? That's yeah. incredibly humbling. Mm -hmm. So the, worst, the the thing I never wanted to do was like take away from the book they're buying and be like, oh, yeah, whatever. It's a Batman one, but look at that damn label. I mean, wait a no, no. <laughs> I mean, it's an awesome book first and it happens to have this custom label second, yeah. you know? So, but on the back of the label, we, we, we did go a little bit, um, you know, uh, uh, all out in, in telling a story from left to right chronologically um, as best we could with a lot of imagery and uses a lot of overlapping. Um, and, um, you know, it's there in that trailer to, to be viewed. So I don't know, it's been surreal in that respect. Uh, we're trying to stay, you know, again, very grounded. I can assure you we will be. I don't think I'm cool for this. I don't think that I have any kind of ego for this. This could have happened to either mm -hmm. of you gentlemen. It's very simple. If your dad would have had comics and, and including stamps, guess what? You'd have a whole bunch of these comics too. So it's nothing yeah. I earned or deserved to have this. We always tried to make this a family thing before he passed. We did not want it this way. It was massive arguments about dad, let's do this as a family. Let's do this before you pass. Let's have you involved with this. Mm -hmm. You know, you deserve to find out how nice some of these books are. You know, I, that was in a very emotional moment. I did not have a very good relationship with my father. He's very hard um, he, he, he never admitted his condition and, um, you know, having Asperger's like he did is no problem. I have several friends that have things. So what you manage your condition. We all have something, right? He never managed that. He never admitted it. He never realized that it was hurting other people, but you know what? I was a very emotional moment when I went down to one of the first times and, you know, had the Batman and the Superman graded and realized that, oh my God. This is the second nicest conditioned Superman on the planet at the time. You know, there were two eight O's and, a, and then there was our seven O at the time. That's powerful, man. You know what I mean? Here I am standing there alone, you know, in the heart of COVID in the lobby of CGC with Matt, you know, having that experience. And he wasn't there. You know, he deserved to be there. It was his book. You know what I'm saying? So there has been a lot of those kind of moments where you stop and be like, man, you know, this is incomplete. He should have realized this. He should have known how special this was. Now, he would have lost his mind about us being so public about everything because he was so <laughs> afraid of everything. But that's another whole story. I mean, literally lost his mind. But the fact of the matter is that um, uh, there are many scenarios uh, uh, that we come across that he deserved to be a part of, of course. You know, these are his books. And all yeah. I'm doing is when you ask if I'm a collector, I'm just continuing on. And instead of compiling a hundred copies or something, it's like, no, okay, we don't have that book. Or maybe I can trade up our copy of this one and so on um, and really make a thoughtful collection um, mm -hmm. of things I just like. Again, a lot of the books I even have on display or whatever else, they're not worth anything, but the covers are awesome. 
You know what yeah. I mean? I could care less. That's what it's about for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can invest in comics. You can invest in stocks. Does anyone post their stock certificates on the wall of Ford <laughs> Motor Company that they own? No. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, it's a, that's an investment. Great. There are certain books that we invest in and we feel they're great spec books and whether past or present, but if I don't like the cover, I'm not going to just blame them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They have to mean something to me or the story. Did you, on your journey, have you come across any sellers that knew your dad or that sold him anything? Remember he was invisible. No, my dad didn't wow. sell anything. Oh no. I mean like, did he, did you meet any sellers that sold him? Oh comics? yes. We, yeah. well, yeah. Well, yes and no. We dug up some people. And so, you know, as a kid, I'd get dragged along to some of these things. And again, it wasn't for me, even though if I would have said, hey, dad, can I have a comic or two? I'm sure he would have. But again, comics were dirty to me because they, again, they were, they were forced. They were, they were, they're just presented in a very prude, sterile way, the way he collected. Okay. So the thing is that I remember going to some of these stores. So what would happen is that I would get to goof around with some of the employees and I was a little kid and they'd you know, screw around with me or whatever. And I'd get to go behind this counter and, you know, because he'd know them so well. And anyway, um, we duck up a couple of the, the employees, you know, that are still in the industry 30 years later, wow. you know what I mean? Amazing. Right. And so I got the chance to interview a couple of them and that was amazing. Um, however, however, I was a little let down because they didn't have that much information either. They really didn't know. I mean, they knew that he'd come in the store and get stuff and whatever, but they didn't know that he was amassing all the stuff he did. So even the people that were literally selling him the books were kind of in the dark about really the quantity and what he was doing uh, and so on. Um, but, you know, I did I did get a couple cool stories, one one involving like a case of giant size X-Men that the store had that he wanted the whole case. Um, at the, but remember at the time, this is 1975. I mean, yeah, no one yeah. cared. I mean, what is a giant size X-Men book? Great. Um, and so, you know, they, the, the, the story was that I was given by the, the people that worked in the store when we interviewed them was that they were moving shops and there was this case that was forgotten about. And it was literally a case of giant size. And he's like, well, I'll take the whole thing, you know? And they're like, no, 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 you can't have the whole damn thing. So I ended up getting like, <laughs> he, he ended up getting like 13 of them. And, um, Eight of them were nine eights when we whipped them out. Yeah, <laughs> insane. And they weren't even in ba- uh, they they were in bags, not boards. Um, <laughs> you know, but as a square bound book, you know what I mean, right? They yeah. were close together, and he did store them, alternating, you know, um, um, bindings and so on. Um, but you know, again, that's a story right there of how I know how he got that, and he wanted the whole damn case. You know what I mean? But. <laughs> There's probably thousands of those stories, of course, you know, that I would never be privileged to that set. So we're making our own memories. You know what I mean? We we have yeah. stuff that comes up every day and we have little clips and videos and, you know, or or sometimes I have to I have to say, we'll like redo a scenario. I'm like, wait a minute, did that just really happen? Let me ask you about that right now. Because I mean, we have experiences that, you know, not a lot of people can experience, um, you know, with just the element of surprise and then the condition and then just having these books be out of nowhere because again, they're not in an order. So it's not like you go to a box and it says X-Men, you know, okay, this is X-Men 27 through 85. Nope. You go to a box and it's Woody Woodpecker, X-Men, Daffy Duck, uh, Mary Poppins, (laughs) not exaggerating. Um, Battlestar Galactica. Oh my God. Star Trek one. That's cool. I mean, and you'll go through this box and that will be how it is. So he must've just filed the stuff away as he, as he got it. And I was that. Every once in a while, you'll run into a box that has a little run in it, but never the whole damn thing. So don't get excited. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's funny. I mean, um, so that's our that's what we're still dealing with. I have a I have a guy that works for me um, that's become a really trusted resource that's very involved. Um, um, he's been in comic all his life, pretty much, and and he literally goes through boxes every single day and pulls out either books that are in incredible condition um, that should be graded, or just obviously the keys. Or, or just otherwise things that we should be, you know, very aware of and identifying. We probably have 5,000 books right now that need to go to CGC, you know, wow. that are just waiting. Yeah. That's incredible. Your dad sounded very protective over his collection. Do you think he had like understanding the value, potentially of the value of these things long-term? He did. Uh, not, not, not the value that they really were. He had sure. a sure. delusional a value. And I mean, on the low end, um, <laughs> Yeah. And, and well, the reason is because, see, this brings up another thing is that I would constantly ask him, okay, what are we doing? 
again, I didn't want to be left with this. I, I don't know how much more I can say it any clearly. Who wants to be left? I, don't, I shouldn't say that because people go crazy. But I mean, you don't want to inherit 300,000 unknown things and then also a whole bunch of cars and whatever. You want a roadmap. You want direction. You want wishes. You know, if he would have said, listen, Darren, it's my wishes that this happened with them. Great, Dad. I'll fulfill that. You know, I'm well honor whatever you ask. Okay, but I didn't want to do it alone. I didn't want to do it where it was just dumped. I didn't want to have to, you know, um, contain all these. I mean, just the logistics of housing all these things uh, are these articles because it doesn't end the comics again. Remember, cards, Star Wars toys, original yeah. in the box. Yeah. Tons of Tons. Wow. Okay. Wow. The, the figures, the ships. I mean, take up a lot of damn room. Oh they yeah. do. Okay. They do. Yeah. 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 I'll tell Spitz the other day, you got to be careful about the stuff we're getting. Like, <laughs> I know. Buying it's, too much. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, first of all, there's the logistical part of it. Then there's then there's the sorting, categorizing, documenting, inventorying, making theft control. I mean, literally, I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a big deal. I happen to own a warehouse um, that I was able to, you know, facilitate to contain these things. And part of doing that was bringing in three 40 foot by eight foot shipping containers, the ones that literally go across the ocean on like barges. Yes. Wow. Um, and honestly, that was a very <laughs> economical way to deal with it, to be honest with you, because I would have otherwise had to do a full build out because you can't just put this stuff in an open warehouse. I got employees wandering around like, what the hell? No. Yeah. So this has to be contained, secure, independently. And uh, those were actually a really good option because they're all self-contained and we put them next to each other and we built a little room around them for us to actually sort and press and clean because that's another whole thing. You know, a lot of these things need to be some TLC, you know, so just imagine um, <laughs> that you have all these things that before you grade, like, oh, shoot, let's, you know, we got to get that spine roll out. We got to get that crease out. You know, you want to present them in the best possible condition. Um, so that's a whole massive effort. You know, we have, I don't know how many presses at this point, but a bunch and they're pretty much running every day, all day. Um, what do you do? You know, I mean, again, um, so it's, 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 yeah, it's been a challenge, um, on the logistical end, uh, you know, you have to be structured for it. humidity control, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. I can imagine. We've got it. We've got it all. Yeah. Wow. But it's not easy. <laughs> no, I can, I can imagine. <laughs> is is there a comic or a collectible in the collection that you've come across that you want to keep forever that you'll never sell? Anything that's very sentimental? I'm a Superman guy. That's my boy. <laughs> Me too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've always been a Superman guy, even well before this. And I was, you know, and that was my father's guy too. There's a lot of reasons for that. Again, everyone, uh, you know, I, I just very much identify with his moral character above the powers. I tell a lot of people it's not about the powers. Uh, a lot of times powers are easy to write. You know what I mean? We could just sit around and write some crazy power. Oh, this guy can do this. I mean, that's easy, but you have to, you have to weave that into that character being, I don't want to say human, but you know, being, being a personality, you know, how does that, how does that character deal with his powers or her powers? Um, so if that's a little bit of a hint, you know, I'm, I'm a heavy Superman guy, um, <laughs> but there are a lot of things that we're keeping. Absolutely. Um, that's awesome. And yes, absolutely. Um, I don't have a need for, you know, a bunch of duplicates. That's, that's not exactly my thing, but I also uh, am one that recognizes timing in the market and uh, I have no urgency to sell anything yeah. at any time Good. whatsoever. Uh, yeah. We're not being pressured into doing so. Yeah, I don't need to sell anything, but I certainly don't want to have all these things just laying around needlessly, <laughs> yeah. uh, hundreds and hundreds of copies or whatever else or things that I like don't need to, you know, that I can part with. And it gives me great joy to bring these out to people that do appreciate them, you know, and again, if I'm not you know, is into that character or that, that series or whatever else. Well, let's damn well get it into the hands of someone who does, you know what I mean? There's everybody likes something. I find a lot of enjoyment in, in that part as well, but no, there are many, many things that will be kept and we're proud to keep them. Superman one, especially is a very sentimental comic for ourselves. And also our community, there's a, a digital comic that was sold on Palm and a T of Superman one. And it's, it's just become like, it just, Man, it's special for everybody and for everyone out there, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. licensed through, yeah, it's licensed through DC and, and yeah, yeah. Warner Brothers. And I'm aware of it. And, you know, again, one of the things I was excited about you guys is I'm a heavy crypto guy as well. 
Oh, cool. Uh, awesome. Nice. Oh, Very nice. much so. Yeah. In the height of my day, I had about 60 Bitcoin miners, S9s, uh, in a warehouse that I was mining for a oh, while. <laughs> and uh, I've been following all along. And I've even um, um, I've even been involved in um, some crypto projects as well. I One of my companies I own is a, is a, a fintech investment company. We've worked on a bridge interface for crypto to accept that in the platform. I also have a company called Retail Crypto that I formed that's working on um, uh, accepting crypto in a retail environment as well without ATM. So definitely a fan of uh, both sides of that fence. Um, um, and again, you know, my, 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 my first and core company is, is a technology company. So yeah, I very much identify with that as well. And then this whole digital era, I find it very funny that they, um, in the NFTs are intentionally creating defects to give them different grades. I think that's hysterical, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but how yeah. else would you do it? I guess, how else do you do it, right? If you want to have a Superman one that is let's just say a hundred grand, well, it has to be different in some way than the one that's going to be a thousand bucks. And right. you have yeah. to create that digitally. How else do you do it? And I think it's funny as hell that you literally are buying something digital that's weathered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been following that. I think it's super, yeah. super funny. It's really cool. The, the project is uh, run by Jim Lee. You know Jim Lee and his team, and he's done a phenomenal job. He's very emotionally connected mm -hmm. to the community, and and also the project itself. And and yeah. he's been responding on Twitter. People have made asking questions about the degradation and the process of thought process that went through it. And uh, and also on VV Digital Collectibles, they they released uh, Marvel comic books, and they've oh, been yeah. releasing different variants. And you know what's really fun, Darren, is is seeing how this is affecting people for the past year and a half how excited they are about collecting because they're not just collecting digital now. People who are never collectors in their lives are now buying physical comic books. They're walking to comic shops, going to comic cons. And it's yeah. and this is this world of collecting is just getting started. And it's fun to see a lot of their passion for collecting start with digital collectibles. It all started yeah. with digital, which is really cool. And there's been some major milestones in that. Um, you know, again, as with the investor hat, because that's 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 something I very much enjoy doing. I, I consider investing a hobby. I, I very much enjoy the process of multiplying money and figuring that out. And again, not not mm -hmm. the greed of it, but because of just what's the angle, like like figuring that out. I like that puzzle. You know, it's a very interesting yeah. thing, whether it's staking in crypto or whether it's finding the good platform. Fuck you, Celsius. Um <laughs> Oh, me too. I also got burned there. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, dude. Um, but the thing is that, I mean, the thing is that um, I, I've i always enjoyed looking for those patterns. So when Disney bought Marvel, that was an oh boy moment, right? Yeah. Right there. That was a big one. When Disney bought yeah. Star Wars, that was an oh boy moment. Okay. And then when uh, Blackstone Capital bought CGC, yeah. that was a big deal. For me, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then whoever the firm is that bought PSA, and I'm forgetting it right now, but also Wall Street money. So when you have Wall Street money now looking at this industry and saying we're in, well, it's just like when Disney buys Marvel, they don't know how to fail. Neither does Wall Street. Big money, they don't know how to fail. They'll will it to work, no matter what. And so the thing is, that's part of what you're seeing as well. But I do agree with you that the momentum in this is 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 high. You know, when I have my you know, my wife that's bugging me to see the new Guardians movie because, you know, that's there's great. some cute actors then that are funny. Yeah. But that's huge. Because <laughs> yeah. if you yeah. try to drag your girl to a superhero movie 20 years ago, you dork. You're not, I'm not going with you. <laughs> go, go with your buddies. What the hell's wrong? Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm, you know, I'm right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How it's changed. Now that uh, maybe a guy like Helmsworth is Thor. Interesting how that works, right? I yeah. mean, uh, but does a tremendous job, of course. I mean, um, you know, so yes, there's been a tremendous amount of success. I personally, with my wife, watch multiple. We're watching Teen Titans right now. We're watching uh, Superman and Lois right now. Uh, we're nice. watching things like Rings of Power, um, you know, uh, nice. uh, Dungeon and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? We're watching yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, together. how cool is that? Like, yeah. are you crazy? <laughs> but but Hugh it. Grant's in it. And yeah, how yeah. sweet is yeah. that? You know, nice. I mean, yeah. so <laughs> Hollywood's done a very, very good job of normalizing this um and making this household uh when you're going to these cosplays that's a whole nother facet of this right now it's like a super cool thing to just go and do our local con is this weekend super excited for it in detroit it's called the motor city comic con we'll be there at full force and uh it's an event it's a just it's a pop culture event of like-minded people having fun enjoying themselves um again i think it's a very uniting thing 
you know, race, sex, religion doesn't matter inside the Comic-Con, man. It's all good. And I love that. 100%. I mean, that's where it needs to be. You know what I mean? And um, so I enjoy that community very much. And this has been a good way for us to kind of be hyper exposed to it if you will. <laughs> yeah. we just got some great news that we're going to be uh pressed at san diego comic-con we just got accepted mm -hmm. for, i'm so we're so pumped and i, I will be in it. san diego hey, I'll be, oh nice I'll oh they'll have to meet there. up then yeah, i was there last awesome. yeah 100 percent hit me up i was there yeah. last year had a great time uh but this year it should be different we have a we there's a, a chance we'll be on a panel about oh. the film uh so that's exciting if we're not i don't care yeah. i mean again that's adam's wing yeah. um that, that that's dealing with the movie so there'll be enough people that we know and want to run into and um uh harley will be the primary dealer for us there um you know representing our books i'll make sure he has uh a a very large sample and because you know this year we'll have the label there where you know last year we didn't quite have that there you know cgc's there so that's exciting yeah it'll be it'll be it'll be a party for sure we'll be there it's awesome look forward to that going back to superman one you know, for our <laughs> audience out there according to go collect there's only 185 180 and two seven o's mm -hmm. and one is in your collection and the other one is currently actually being sold on on golden right now are you seven o's? Around a, a seven o yeah the other yeah. seven o that's funny yeah, because that seven o sold about a year ago so yeah, the story yeah. with that is so here's here's what happened on this for your audience to know so in 2020 when i graded mine Here's what the census looked like. Two eight O's that had never moved. They had never sold. And then there was a six. I went down there very, very hopeful that we would be higher than a six. Because again, I looked at that with several other people. But was it trimmed? Was it fully complete? I mean, I had looked through it, but Jesus, man, only once. I mean, you're going to flip through that book with your bare hands? I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it. I mean, nope. you're psycho. I mean, you know what I mean? So no. <laughs> the thing is that, again, of course, we didn't press it or anything like that ourselves. So I took this thing down to Matt and in the heart of COVID, wasn't even supposed to be in the building. Brought down the Batman one, brought down the Turtles one, brought down the five copies of FF one, brought down the four copies of X-Men one, brought down the boys, okay? <laughs> and so uh, I, I I get there, and Matt, <laughs> by the way, the most grounded, nicest dude ever. I can't I say enough about him. About he, Matt. he is awesome. such a cool I, guy, I really to, and he, he's deservant of all of his recent successes becoming the president of the company and everything else, but Again, that's that's how it should have been. A guy that was, you know, a comic presser and just, you know, super into it and working his way up and, and very well deserved. But anyway, he literally is waiting for me in the lobby, almost kind of like bouncing around. And, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, yes. and I'm not, I'm saying that with full respect. I mean, in a good way. I mean, this is the passion of him, and and yeah. and you know, uh, you know how these things don't come up that often. So he invites me in. You know, I got a mask on. I wasn't even supposed to be in the building. He's like, come here. I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right what are we doing you know and he's like let's see it i'm like see it i'm like we're in the lobby he's like oh, let's see it so <laughs> i'm dead serious i'm untaping this box heart racing as hell and i'm like all right so we look at this book he has this little measuring tape out because he's got to measure it is it trimmed he goes through this book like he's speedy gonzalez <laughs> you know count the pages i'm like oh my god and then i'm just watching him flip it all around and uh, he looks over at me and has this big smile. And he goes, nice book. And I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to oh, faint. I'm ready to faint. Awesome. I'm literally ready to faint. And I'm like, nicer than a 6-0. Nice book. <laughs> <laughs> literally said that. I swear on my life. And he looks at me and just puts his hand on my shoulder. And he goes, congratulations. And he didn't answer that. I couldn't <laughs> answer me. And I'm like, um, okay, um, what now? He goes, well, let me, he goes, here's the thing. It's complete. It's not trimmed. He goes, it's not restored. He goes, let me clean it up a little bit. I'm like, whatever that means. Um, you know, let me clean it up again. He goes, you have a beautiful book. Here. And I'm like, well, okay. And, and, you know, basically I'm, and then I go, there's a couple other nice books in here. You know I mean? <laughs> it's a Batman one and whatever and uh, he goes, no, 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 we'll take care of everything. He goes, I just, I just, you know, really want to see this. And I go, okay, great. And so, of course, at the end of that story, it comes back a 7-0. So what that meant at the time was that there were two 8-0s that had never sold, then a 7-0. Then what happened is I, I had really been talking to Heritage and it decided that, you know, um, we, we would move forward with them for a lot of the, um, you know, bigger sales that we were going to do just for, and, you know, I have several reasons for that. Nothing against anyone else, but, you know. 
Uh, the long and short of it is that uh, I got a call urgently one one night from my my rep. Uh, his name is also Matt from Heritage. And I mean, we're talking like at 830 at night on a random weekday. And he goes, are you selling your book? I go, what? Dude, I'm, I don't even know what I was doing at the time. I was probably like, like my, my stepson's hockey game or something. I'm like, what are you, I'm not a hockey game, man. I don't know what the hell he goes, there's a 7 old Batman or Superman for sale right now. I'm like, really? Well, it's not mine. So what had happened is someone had had that book graded and it came back a 7 and immediately put it to auction on Comic Link or Comic Connect. And so because it wasn't Heritage and it wasn't, you know, Golden, because Heritage had no idea about it. They thought I was selling the book like underneath them. I'm like, no. <laughs> so obviously we watched that one with great interest. So the one that's selling now that you mentioned must be that same one where the person's only owned it for about a year. So we'll see what it goes for. That's it. You're saying it's going on Golden right now, huh? Yeah, there's well, thank you so much. Lines. I would not have known. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, idea. no definitely not to... ours. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, <laughs> we yeah. actually we had uh, we we had uh, the head of comic book strategy from Golden on recently, and we talked about it. And he's, I don't think it's the Stone Superman guys because they have a specific label. Mm -hmm. um, so that's wow, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm the, so the, happy that's for so. I mean, we'll see yeah. because the market's a little yeah. air right now. But you know what? But those top um, grades, big books like that, yeah. I the mean, top grades, yeah. 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 Who Absolutely. knows? They're one offs. Yeah. That's F the fingers thing. crossed for another record. It, well, we'll see. I mean, and so what happened with uh, the reason there's an eight five now, just so you know, is one of the eight O's became an eight five. I was going to say, yeah. okay, I was going to ask you that. Okay, that's wow. So they cracked it and it went to an eight five. Wow, that's amazing. Isn't that amazing? And oh that's the God. one that's that went for like five point two or whatever, you know, um, wow. and the eight five because it was the highest sale ever. What's funny is that the seven O, and we watched the seven O. We actually zoomed it for the movie. We, we did a Zoom recording for the movie. So we watched the 7 sale. And uh, I'll be honest, I was underwhelmed. And it's not because it's like, um, I don't, you know, that's not a like, oh, this book should be $10 million because, you know, I have a part in it. I really did think it went for a little less than it should have, um, only because it was at that time the nicest copy to ever have sold ever. But, you know, like the 9.4 AF15 had gone for like 3.6 recently. And I'm like, man, you know, I would think it at least, you know, would have beat that or something. I, you know what? Who knows? Again, it's that buyer that day. And remember in an auction, right? Exactly. You need two guys. That's two people. Mean. You don't need one. It's two people who want it. You got to have the second person that's a bozo too. And they're going yeah. like this. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know the story about uh, Todd McFarlane? buying the mark mcguire baseball the 70th home run, i think 70th no please home run, tell 60 me. Second. and he was talking about how so he bought that baseball and right after it happened in 1999 and he was on the phone in the auction house over in Her over or somewhere in new york and he was making bids in is some some guy was there in person with an audience and the audience is cheering this guy on against this guy on the phone who was todd mcfarlane <laughs> todd mcfarlane is a big baseball fan he played baseball himself before he got injured sure. and he he was on the phone bidding the top they're bidding against each other like crazy. And when they hit $2 million, he's in the kitchen with his wife and he put in a bid for $2 million, And his wife looks at him and just leaves. <laughs> just walks out of the room. And he ended up getting, I think, for a little over two or to three. I think it was two to three yeah. million he ended up buying it for. The ball is probably not worth, you know, 50, 60 percent of that now. But right. that being said, the publicity he got out of that sale, because it was the highest of all time. And he was able to market his brand, so the McFarlane toy brand, and he got a lot of publicity yeah. out of it. So fascinating story. And that's just it. You don't know what's going to happen in these auctions. And it's a worldwide appeal, right? You could have some chic in Dubai bidding against some Japanese exactly. businessman, then yeah. you don't know what the hell you got going on. I mean, and the thing yeah. is that I, I will say it's very interesting to me because again, I follow a lot of different things and um, you know, exposed to a lot of different um you know, whether it's investment platforms or, or whatever else. And I, I want to I want to really qualify what I'm going to say. I think when people say things like, oh, my God, I cannot believe, you know, something like that would sell for. First of all, they use the word sell for, which is it, technical, but I'll get back into that. Sell for three million dollars. I'm like, there's people that buy cars for three million dollars. You know what I mean? And they're they're not. I mean, more. OK, yes. and they're not always yeah. some. You know, they're, they're obviously limited or whatever else, but the thing is, they're not <laughs> as iconic in any way of like an Action 1 or Detective 27 or even Superman 1. I mean, these are characters that are species-wide. I mean, these are human characters. Like, forget everything else. You can go to every continent, 
every anywhere. And they've done studies and they say that the Superman symbol is the third most recognizable symbol yes. on earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Hello. Yes. And you own the one of the original books of that, and it's only three million dollars. Yeah. I got news for you guys. There's paintings of bowls of fruit that are worth 30 million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Absolutely. 30 million. They may be yeah. one of one, but it's a bowl of freaking fruit. Yeah. All right. It's not an iconic character that I mean, are we being for real here? I mean, yeah. again, I'm not talking down anyone that wants to own that, but what I'm trying to say is that's cool that it's worth 30. All good. So why can't the Superman be worth 15? Absolutely. Okay. So I find that very interesting. I'm going to be very honest. Some some guy is going to buy some car at a Barrett Jackson auction for three to four million dollars because it's an original Hemi Cuda or whatever, you know, the hell else it is. You know, this is a character that like literally started it all in a lot of ways, you know, and then has survived. And you could say it about Batman, I guess. You could say it about some of the others. I mean, but it better be yeah. one of the first. You know what I mean? You got to go way back. You know, Marvel One. I mean, any of these massive books to me seem underpriced sometimes. And especially since they are a commodity, which means you can sell it at any time. So yeah. while you may have spent that money, did you? You escrowed it. You locked it up. All right. Yeah. You staked it. So <laughs> the point is that, again, you you aren't spending it. You are buying a physical asset that can be sold. You know, taking your 150 foot yacht around the world and burning all that gas and all that spilling all that champagne, that's spending money. OK, mm -hmm. buying a Superman one that has value now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you're just locking that money up. I mean, of course, you may expect it to go up, but. You know, you're owning a piece of pop culture history that's human, not just America, not just, you know what I'm saying? So again, that that's that's my soapbox of it all. And um, I stand behind that. And it's part of why I justify some of the big buys that I have. You know, if I can own um, a big piece of something that is historical, I mean, look at some of these covers. They tell all the stories of what we've been through, you know, women's rights, racial rights, uh, um, um, just, just the wars we fought. I mean, and World War II, the World War II books, especially. Yeah. Cap oh America my Comics God. One is one of my favorite yeah. covers of all. Which one? Cap America. Oh, that's sick. so cool. Sick. Do, do you have any of those? I do not have a Cap one. <laughs> okay. uh, but yeah, I say yeah. I yeah. say yeah, because that's what I tell you what book I want more than a Cap one right the second is a Cap 74, because I'm a huge Red Skull fan, and that's his yeah, last, that's his that last golden issue. And uh, that's got a crazy Red Skull cover. I've always thought that was a sweet cover, so I will own that. The timing's right. But we put together a lot of a lot of these, you know, grills. Startling forty nine just picked up a gorgeous copy and a nine all of that. Um, House of Secrets ninety two. We have one, but I awesome. picked up a real high grade nine four. You know what I mean? So again, getting some of these things, if there was a reason or whatever else. Knock knock knock. Heritage. My book's on auction. <laughs> well, you can always do it, right? You know, isn't mm -hmm. that great? So anyway, I think it's more fun. I mean, and I, I, you know, I own precious metals and so on and like that and crypto and stuff. But I mean, it's fun to look at our balances and wallets, but it's a lot more fun to look at a cool book on the wall too. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's just all how you want to invest. And, but I think these prices are low. <laughs> I, I agree. I'm sure I'll get hated yeah. on for it. <laughs> you, you look at the Mickey Mano rookie card, the 52 Toss rookie card, and there's only three Gem Mint 10s. And it's been estimated that card's going to sell for over $30 million, possibly up to $50 million. I mean, really, those those cards, the owners of those cards probably never want to sell them. So if you see one come to auction, you're going to have people with deep pockets that are going to FOMO into that. And they're going to do whatever they can to get it. When you own that. And we, by the way, we don't have any 52s, but we have two 53s. Cool. Ah. What was he doing? Oh, <laughs> back to the, oh, come on. Anyway, <laughs> but the point is, and then all the way up, of course, every mantle since then. But the point is that um, um, what do you own when you own that card? It's a picture of a guy's face. Right. You know what I mean? It's not art. It's not a story. You know, it's representative of maybe what that person achieved. And again, I mean, phenomenal athletes and world figures, but you know, that's another thing that I run into all the time is the discussion about when to move certain cards. Like, um, are you guys either baseball fans at all? Or oh, yeah. No? yeah you are? It. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Fair yeah. enough. Um, so you'll know. So it's like cheating. But I mean, if you ask, walk up to the walk up to a, a, an average person on the street and just just whoever and say, what do you think about Ernie Banks? What I'm are they going to say? What are they going to say? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know who he is, right? Sean? All right. So yeah, the thing is, he's one of the greatest pitchers of all time. 
and he was he was an african-american you know again one of the early guys okay hall of famer beyond why would someone in their mid-40s want to own an ernie banks rookie he didn't watch him play he has no personal connection to him he deserves the, the high value of a card but the point is are we going to exhaust some of the market for some of those players that are not mantle willie mays you know um um ty Cobb. i mean you know some of the 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 forever just household names um hank aaron all right those everybody knows but how about a guy like alan trammell a local detroit boy phenomenal player you know what i mean won the 84 world series shortstop you know incredible class act as well or you know i mean again these are going to be maybe forgotten names where some of the superheroes, they're kind of endless. You know what I mean? They yeah. they last forever. So it's a it's an interesting discussion we have all the time of timing the market of when to get rid of some of this stuff, especially the cards. Because again, yeah. everyone knows who LeBron James is, right? But you have players, you know, uh, back in the day that these kids have no idea who they were. If I said, hey, you want a Will Chamberlain? Well, who? Yeah. You know, no clue, right? They don't, probably don't even know who Dr. J is, you know, Jewish yeah. servant. So you run into that, uh, whereas the superheroes keep getting recycled and Star Wars keeps getting recycled. And so they just yeah. don't die. So that's a very interesting concept, you know, is these superheroes can't die if you keep recycling. Whereas the players, so true. Yeah. yeah, so interesting. I don't know. That's why, I, again, you back to your, you know, a 52 mantle versus a soup one. I'm taking a soup one every day. Totally. All day. Yeah. 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 But it's interesting from a reference, you know, it's, it shows, in my opinion, when you're examining markets like that, it shows that it's very undervalued. But actually, I want to show you this. This is pretty good. Pete Rose. Oh, hell him. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm on baseball. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he wrote on it. <laughs> hey, he, that, there's a man right there that deserves I to be it. in the Hall of Fame, doesn't he? Oh, I agree. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. His numbers are unbelievable. Yeah. And maybe he will be one day. And, and so on. we have so. a couple of his rookies. Great card. Nice. Um, but no, guys, I mean, I try to stay very on the pulse of this at, a, at the 30,000 foot level and, um, you know, conscious of things like, you know, for example, we'll, we'll never flood the market with some of our stuff, even though we have the potential to. Uh, yeah. I would never do that, um, you know, but I've read some very funny things. Um, and again, I'm not used to being in any kind of limelight or whatever. We're not certainly not doing this film for any kind of ego. It wasn't even my idea, like I said, um, yeah. but it is touching a lot of people. Uh, it is uncomfortable for me sometimes to be like a little bit in that spotlight uh, uh, sometimes. Cause again, that's just not how I've ever conducted myself. I always kind of mm -hmm. stayed back and, you know, I've told some other people, you know, one of my, one of my favorite um, FDR quotes is walks off and carry a big stick. And I've yeah. always, I've always identified with that, you know, so I, I enjoy like walking around a con and not people, you know, when they, when people don't know who I am or what the collection we have and just being one of them and you know, walking up and wow, nice book and this and that when be other assumed. I always, I always like that. Um, and so it's, it's just navigating that. And when the movie comes out, maybe that'll be harder to do, but um, you know, hopefully it does, it does start touching people in some ways and I don't know. We can't, we can't wait to see it. And, uh, and Darren, thanks <laughs> Me so too. much for on today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you're going to have a pre-screening. And on, <laughs> on a personal note, yeah, just, just thank you so much. I mean, I, I'm sure this is uncomfortable coming so public about all of this and, you know, for you to, to share this with the world. And it's been an amazing experience for me and, and I'm sure a lot of collectors and mm -hmm. just like, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for doing really, that. that, that well, that, that right there, that those are what keep us going. And I'm not being dramatic. I'm not being sappy. It's the truth though. There have been multiple times. Cause I, first of all, I've invested a lot in this film financially, obviously time. Um, I'm certainly not the only investor. And in, in fact, that's one of the things that people will be like, well, why don't you just pay for the whole thing? You got all these comics. It's like, well, it's not a, this, I'm not the one making the movie. <laughs> it's it's I, I productions making a movie they're raising the money for it now of course i've contributed but the fact is that um uh you know we have other investors people that believe in the project people that uh you know want to see it get made and that's something but i have to tell you I, there have been multiple times that i've almost pulled a plug because it's gotten too much you know what mm -hmm. i mean too too emotional you know here we are trying to as a family um deal with what he did to us our whole life and you know i have a, I have a special needs younger brother um i have a mother that um it was massively impacted by my 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 father's um i keep saying condition but just just the, his treatment if you will 
And, you know, this movie keeps that alive. You know, we have to keep telling those stories when we're trying to bury some of that stuff. We're trying to move on from yeah. it. You know, I go to, we go to group therapy once a week, my brother, my mother and me, because my brother has a lot of unresolved issues from it. Um, we've been very sensitive on his involvement in the film. He really is standoffish from it, even though he is an important part of the story. You know, I don't want to subject him to stuff. You know, I have four stepkids that I consider my own. I've raised them since they were tiny. Uh, we kept them out of it on purpose because again, I don't need people coming up to them and saying, "Whoa, this." Yeah. One. You know what I mean? Totally. And and it's 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 when you it, it may sound again, it may sound glamorous, like, "Oh, wow, this guy's got an amazing collection, You're making a movie, man, that's the life." not when you do it for real you know not when you do it for real of course there's exciting moments of course it's it's very humbling to be on shows like this and for you guys to take the time and say wow we'd like to talk to this guy you know that's impacting but just know that those are the things that keep us going is the comments that are like wow you know what i took a look at how i collect you know like i've had multiple fathers say this like you know what i think i should play ball with my son a little bit more and i'm serious i'm serious okay or i've had people um you know, not understand like, oh, well, you know, I, my wife's mentioned a couple of things. Maybe I should take more note, you know, to that. Or um, maybe include my kids in in what I'm doing, you know, or yeah. whatever. Just all, whatever it is, all over the map, right? And um, that is what makes it worth it. Because otherwise, Again, what am I doing? Like you said, I'm just exposing myself. I'm just opening myself up for criticism. I'm opening myself up for people coming at me. Can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have that? It happens all the time. And again, we try our best. But I mean, you know, sometimes when it's like, well, no, we're not selling those. Well, come on, you have so it's like, well, no, we're, now's not the time. You know, I mean, it's hard. It can get hard. And then just worrying about the physical security. I mean, ensuring this stuff. Oh. You could buy yeah. a very nice amount of comic books a year for how much it just costs to insure. You know? But it's necessary, right? I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you're doing a great service. I mean, you're you're preserving these books and making sure that they, you know, they stand the test of the time. So yeah. Yeah. we're trying. You know, we get you know, we get a lot of people say, Well, why are you grading so many? Um, you know, well, because they're that good of condition a lot of times. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just like, yeah, we sell a ton of raw books too, but good grief. I mean, you know. I can't count how many times now we've had highest in the census of books. Not all major key. Peacemaker one. Cool little book. You know, a Peacemaker one. Not as first. It's not the five of fighting 50 or five for fighting 40 or whatever the heck it is. We have those. But the thing is that we have um, the highest graded Peacemaker one. We just came across and it came back and like, wow, that's really cool. You know, none's ever sold. We have the highest. And multiple other older books and um, you know, and, and it doesn't mean that they're major grails um, all the time, but when you still have the nicest copy of something, that's significant. And the yeah. only way you're going to know that is to grade it. That's the only way you're going to know it. You know, so it's nothing like that we're all about grading or, you know, I mean, in fact, my right hand man in this, my best friend since first grade, who's been a comic collector his whole life, he's a raw guy. You know, mm -hmm. I gave him a Silver Surfer 4. Oh, wow. um, I give, well, I give him a lot. Oh, I, hey, listen, anyone inside the family of what it is gets whatever they want within reason. I mean, you know, oh, I mean it. But the thing is, because that's what it's about. I mean, but he took a Silver Surfer 4 and an 8.5 and cracked the goddamn thing right in front of him. Because he <laughs> likes raw books. That's um, awesome. that's serious. That was Stanley's favorite cover. You've got to respect it, though. Yeah. He yeah. likes his books raw. He wants to touch yeah. them. He wants to smell them. He wants to look them. <laughs> and yes. good for him. I yeah. love it. I think it's fantastic. But <laughs> it takes all kinds you know i i actually love the, the look of a, of a graded book you know what Me i mean too. nothing Me against the yeah. fact of like you know reading the story and everything like you can have a reader copy or just you know join the marvel program where you can read online you know the story is important but that art and preserving it and then you know what you have and i would just love the official look of a great graded comic and it's like all right this is legit it's here i know what it is um it, it's not up for debate yeah. so yeah I don't know. Teach their own. Yeah. Darren, thanks so much for coming on today, man. This has been a lot of fun. Sweet, man. I want yeah. to have you on again in the future. I hope you do. And we'll see you in San Diego. Yeah. You will see us in San Diego in <laughs> July. And I'll bring a little crew with me. Um, and again, uh, we have no agenda other than hanging out, meeting people, and um, watching Harley hopefully sell some of our books. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. Awesome. Looking forward to it. We'll make sure to include all the social links down, uh, down below in the details. And we hope to see you again soon. Right on, man. Thanks, guys. Take some time. Take care. Thanks so much.